Hello, everyone. Thanks again for coming to day two of the Ray Summit. My name is Jay Kumar Ganesh. I'm part of the engineering leadership team at Anyscale. And today we have Smita Shah, who is the director of engineering at Uber AI, the central machine learning platform and applied ML team at Uber. Welcome, Smita. Thank you so much, JK, for the warm welcome. So today we are going to talk about Uber's journey using Ray, how they have used Ray to uh, improve some of their ML applications, and a quick glimpse into the future use cases of Ray at Uber. But before we get started, just a quick show of hands. How many of you folks know about this company called Uber? <laughs> uh, all right, almost uh, everyone here. How many of you know how machine learning is used at Uber? Much uh, lesser number of hands went up over here, right? So many times when you think of Uber, press a button and a car comes. Why do you even need an engineering team at Uber? <laughs> Why do you even need machine learning at Uber? So let's start there. Why don't you tell us about how machine learning is uh, used at Uber? So, JK, as you know, machine learning plays a very critical role in Uber's ecosystem. Now, Uber operates at the intersection of the physical and the virtual world. So when you press something on the app, like JK said, something actually moves in the physical world. So the better we understand the context of the ecosystem that we operate in, be it about the rider, eater, earner, or marketplace in general, the better we can serve the needs of our customer. So when you open the app, the prices and ETAs that you see on our rides and delivery uh, applications, restaurant and dish recommendations, search and discovery experiences, these are all powered by machine learning. We use machine learning extensively to help accelerate um, earner onboarding through our automated document transcription, restaurant onboarding through menu transcription, so on and so forth. So across all of our lines of businesses, we do billions of machine learning decisions in real time. Billions of real uh, number of decisions is what it's needed to get a car uh, to your doorstep. It's fascinating to hear that. So you lead Uber AI, which includes the central machine learning platform team as well as some of the applied ML applications. Can you tell me a bit more about the work your team does? Absolutely. So yeah, um, I lead Uber AI, and this is a centralized machine learning team. We, do, uh, we have the machine learning platform, which does end-to-end -end machine learning, uh, as well as uh, the applied applications. So essentially, uh, the computer vision, personalization, NLP, uh, recommendation use cases that are used for our delivery, mobility, and freight businesses. These are all powered by platforms and solutions that come out of Uber AI. And so Uber has been on this uh, machine learning uh, journey, right? Michelangelo, as many of you are aware, is one of the first ML platforms which uh, adopted the feature store and, and did a lot of the innovations um, uh, that has happened in the ecosystem. So can you tell us a little bit about how the infrastructure has evolved over time and why did you start using Gray? Absolutely. Uh, so right now at Uber, we have a very mature machine learning platform, Michelangelo, that does all aspects of end-to-end -end machine learning, from collaborative prototyping, training, serving, feature engineering, model metadata management, lifecycle orchestration, seamless integration with experimentation, so on and so forth. So all of Uber's machine learning is centralized and is built on Michelangelo. But it's been a journey for us to get here. We had to evolve both the infrastructure as well as evolve the paradigm in how AI ML is done at Uber. So when we started modeling many years ago, we started with classical machine learning techniques. Uber was a much smaller company, and places where AI ML was used were fewer. The platform was a Spark-based monolith that was geared towards an ecosystem of individual developers doing small models and uh, small data sets. And then as Uber's business grew, uh, as it grew in scale, as well as the variety of businesses that Uber supports, there was an explosion of places where we could apply AI. Also, we had a lot more data that enabled us to do more sophisticated machine learning. So we had to evolve the platform from a monolith to a plug-and-play modular API-first architecture, from supporting an ecosystem of individual developers working on small models to an ecosystem where multiple teams could work on single models, from having thousands of models sharded for every possible paradigm possible to having fewer generalized larger models leveraging large data sets. So one such example of this evolution in recent times was this concerted push that we did towards driving deep learning adoption across our most important use cases where it was applicable. 
Now, deep learning compared to classical machine learning applications poses in significant infrastructure challenges in storage, memory, compute, so on and so forth. So we have to really rethink our Spark-based architecture, as well as invest in fault-tolerant distributed infra solutions, uh, our cl cloud versus on-prem strategies, and think about stateful frameworks. And that's where our collaboration and partnership with AnyScale and Ray has been very beneficial. So um, through this partnership, and a huge shout out to Rob and Jay uh, and his teams from Ray, uh, working together on developing Horoward and Ray and XGBoost and Ray has been very critical for us in leveraging large data sets and doing complex modeling seamlessly. Uh, Ray, I think, hits that um, sweet spot of being that abstract uh, layer for distributed ML and some of the flexible primitives that it has for doing distributed ML, the stateful framework, as well as seamless way where it manages data across multiple nodes helps us solve many critical pain points that you see in large scale machine learning. Mm -hmm. So you transitioned from like, you know, Spark ML based uh, and then you went to Horoward for distributed training and uh, Horoward running on Ray and then yeah. now um, you're moving more workloads uh, to Ray uh, and building it in part of the machine learning workload. So uh, what kind of workloads do you feel that you know, uh, Ray is useful for in your experience at Uber? So right now, all of the deep learning workloads at Uber run on Ray. And we are in the process of moving our classical machine learning workloads to Ray. Now, as you know, when you're dealing with large data sets, setting up the workers, uh, partitioning the data, shuffling the data, loading the uh, data, these are time consuming steps. And the more resilient you can be to, these, uh, to failures in these phases, the faster you can finish training. Mm -hmm. So through Ray's um, elastic uh, resource sharing mechanisms, as well as fault tolerant uh, frameworks, we've been able to get an order of magnitude improvement in our training workloads. Also another place where we are experimenting with, uh, with Ray is actually the distributed hyperparameter tuning. Mm -hmm. Essentially, for the first time, we are able to do, for our deep learning, for our large deep learning models, we are able to do hyperparameter tuning, leveraging Ray. And uh, uh, that's something that I'm really interested to see how that pans out. Mm -hmm. So uh, to paraphrase, you're using Ray specifically for training of large scale distributed DL models, and then also hyperparameter tuning right. of um, uh, DL models. And so before Ray, when you were like, doing hyperparameter tuning, like, you know, what was your experience? And like, more specifically, you talked about Ray and fault tolerance. So which, which ML applications have benefited um, from using Ray, either Ray Train or Ray Tune uh, in Uber's ecosystem? Yeah. Um, so one such use case that has benefited from the Ray integration is our use cases that compute ETAs. Mm -hmm. Now, ETAs are very critical for Uber, right? As a user, you might be frustrated when your ETAs are incorrect. So these ETAs are um, used for you know, ordering rights when you place an order on uh, the Eats app, and in general for marketplace balance. Uh, this also happens to be one of our larger models. And through the Ray integration, we've been able to leverage a mag an order of magnitude more data, train faster, and more importantly, ship multiple iterations of the model quicker than before. Mm -hmm. Also another um, use case where um, I think Ray Tune specifically has been beneficial is with our ranking models. So uh, we've been able to select better candidates, again, in a more resource efficient way, and hence give that server customers a lot better uh, when, we have, when we have applied Ray to our ranking use case. But I want to zoom out a bit. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think the benefit that I, say, that I see with Ray is around improving developer productivity and velocity. Um, it, I mean, you know, I often see my teams struggle and get frustrated when they've launched a job and they expect it to take N hours and then they go for coffee or, you know, come back the next day and they see that the job has hung up. It, and you cannot put a price on that. Mm -hmm. So the more resilient you are to training and the more deterministically your job finishes, there's an imp order of magnitude improvement for your, on your productivity. So through Ray, we've been able to experiment faster. And because we're able to experiment faster, now you can try more data and more features and eventually improve that model quality. Yeah, just checking again another audience poll, like, you know, how many of you folks have written ETL pipelines or 
a pipe of jobs for the weekend because you feel, oh, I'll get my job done because, you know, infra is uh, not loaded much. I see a lot of hands <laughs> going up in the back. So this is a problem that's there throughout the community. And yeah, it's great absolutely. to hear Uber's experience of how Reyes actually helped with developer productivity by making it like, you know, fault tolerant as well as, uh, um, so that they can focus on things that matter exactly. rather than just handing the infrastructure parts um, uh, about it. So you talked a, a, a bit about the ranking model, but just to help uh, the audience understand, so how, how does Uber actually use this ranking model? Uh, like what is, what's the ML application that the end user sees uh, from this? Uh, I mean, ranking is used in a variety of places, right? And in, in rides, you see how the choices of the ride options that you have are ranked. Some, more importantly, on the eats side, on the delivery side, you see the restaurants and dish that are ranked and they are recommended. Uh, similarly, on our grocery app, you can see the different grocery options that uh, are made visible for the user. Mm. So w one of the challenges, you know, ML Infra or ML uh, application team always ha has is like, you know, you have your product owners, uh, they'll always say, hey, What's the, at the end of the day, yeah, this is all great, but what's the impact on the business? So in your experience, like, you know, has Ray and the improvement in developer productivity helped resolve this concern? Like you can talk to your product managers or your business owners to say, hey, you know, so we can produce results faster and so we can iterate uh, faster. Uh, has that uh, experience actually panned out at Uber? Um, so definitely, right? Like improving developer productivity is a big focus for us and uh, there are different layers in the ecosystem that all have to come together mm -hmm. in order to comprehensively improve that. And uh, on the machine learning platform, we are working on putting, ensuring that different layers of that come together and work seamlessly. And Ray is an important part of that. Mm -hmm. So you, we have got a lot of companies in the audience who are a little bit more earlier in their infrastructure journey, yeah. right? So uh, what would you tell them um, what worked for you, what they could learn from as you have uh, made this journey uh, from Spark to Horvath to Ray and the various use cases of Ray? So the machine learning industry has evolved a lot, JK, from the time when we started modeling. Uh, on one hand, a lot of the AI components today are commoditized. And on the other hand, the envelope of what is end-to-end -end machine learning is also rapidly expanding. So I have a few nuggets from our learnings of building machine learning at Uber. First is, see, when, when you're starting out building ML platform, you start out from like specific components, right? Usually it starts with training or surveying. But even when you're focused on doing that, be intentional of how your end-to-end -end platform should evolve to be. Specifically, understand where you want to leverage in-house and where you want to bring in third-party solutions, be it open source or paid third-party, and have a clear view of how this all comes together for users of the platform. So that's number one. The second is you have to pay attention to how machine learning is done, the end-to-end -end machine learning is done, and put together those best practices programmatically right from the beginning, because it's a very expensive exercise to go and fix this later on. And the third nugget that I would have is building something like a AI solutions or machine learning platforms require people of diverse skill sets. It's actually not very well understood, right? You need that algorithm person as much as you need the Kubernetes person. You need the performance engineer as much as you need the mobile engineer, the front end engineer, the full stack engineer. So put together the team with those diverse skill sets so that you're tackling that problem of large scale ML and building towards that vision. Uh, so yeah, I yep. think. So that's, that's a, a, a very good point you made. Even in yesterday's uh, talk from Meta, we, talk, we talked about the algorithm folks, the data scientists, as well as the, uh, the infrastructure folks yeah. and the uh, data folks, right? So for, uh, for the audience here, like you know, you have got the Uber ML practitioners or, um, uh, in, in, your, uh, in your team. Like on a day-to-day -day basis, like, you know, can you tell a bit about what do they do? So like how much time do they um, spend on ex optimizing existing models versus handling infra stuff versus actually building the model and launching into production so the audience can map their experiences with uh, the Uber experiences a bit more? Sure. So, it, um, so it's a, the answer is a little bit nuanced, JK. So for, peop for modelers, their focus is on improving the use case, not the model, the use case. They might improve the model, because they are working towards that use case. Sometimes, when they are working on improving the use case, 
the mature offerings of the platform might not be able to cater to their needs. In those cases, like you mentioned, we co-develop, that is, along with the platform builders and the modelers, solutions. It could be investigating a new algorithm, building a new uh, framework, uh, and that's how we kind of like started uh, looking into Ray as well. Um, in formulating that, whatever is that solution, and ensuring that it works for that use case, right? And and we go one step beyond that. So it's not, so first of all, it's important to build that solution. And then it's important to make sure that it works for one particular use case at scale, to make sure that what you have built is not just translating theory into some toy example working, but it's working in production at scale. Then we go a step ahead and then absorb that solution into the platform and make that a mature platform offering and then apply it to all use cases that's ap applicable. And that's where we ensure the synergy exists and keeps going. Mm. And so looking ahead, what, what gets you excited about the ML landscape at Uber as well as you know, uh, features in Ray and Ray's evolution in Uber's uh, ML story? Sure, so I'll take it as two separate questions. Uh, in terms of what I would love to see with Ray, is A, I would love to see more, um, it's, it's, it's a classic thing, more observability and mm -hmm. more debugging capability. Because again, when you're doing these large scale uh, machine learning stuff, things do break here mm -hmm. and there. Mm -hmm. And especially for, and we have a variety of experience of people who are doing ML modeling. So for them, having more actionable feedback helps them, uh, again, address any problem that they're seeing and iterate faster. It all goes to that developer productivity. Second is I'd love Ray to do a lot more of this unified computing. Specifically what I'm interested in is in Ray doing distributed data processing. From an Uber point of view today, like our ETLs, that is the data pipelines are still in Sparkland and we do our training on Ray and then we have to again repackage this and then serve uh, in Spark. So I would love for that data processing to also take place in Ray so that then we can avoid the situation where we have a lot of intermediate data sets mm -hmm. and make that end to end a lot more seamless. Uh, and the third thing that I think Ian is tackling it as part of his lab is more seamless strategies of running machine learning on prem and uh, on cloud. Mm -hmm. um, and what gets me excited when I look forward from you know just building machine learning solutions is, see the golden uh, vision here is can we automate the entire workflow such that we can translate ideas into experiments a lot more seamlessly? Can we automate the MLE or the data scientist, right? And we are uh, doing a lot of work here in terms of uh, architectural exploration, as well as what we're doing with hyperparameter tuning. And in the future, we want to do a lot more seamless feature exploration and technique exploration. And that's where, again, I feel the Ray partnership is going to be a lot more beneficial uh, because I think Ray is a critical component mm -hmm. for us as we are doing these large scale, different kinds of exploration. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Uh, thank you so much, Sita, for all these valuable insights. Both the Uber team as well as uh, mm, uh, the AnyScale and Ray team will be uh, uh, are available at the conference if you want to get more details as to how Uber moved their training and hyperparameter tuning workloads to Ray and their experience has been. So thanks a lot again, Smita, for taking the time off from your busy schedule and coming and talking about Uber's journey. Uh, hope all of you have a great rest of the conference. Thanks a lot, Jason.